like to welcome everyone here this morning for our Easter festival service. Uh, special welcome to all of our guests and visitors with us this morning. Uh, I invite you to turn to face the cross as we begin with our uh, processional uh, liturgy this morning. Uh, just one quick note in the liturgy or in the hymns for the distribution. Uh, please note that uh, he's risen. He's risen is missing a line on that page. So if we get to that distribution hymn this morning, uh, please use your hymnals uh, so you can follow along. Uh, everything else should be fine after that. So, All right, people of God. Uh, uh, Friday was not the end of God's story. Our God is a God of the living. Jesus Christ has risen to save you. He has risen to give you life. People of God, look. The tomb is empty. He has risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's go forth singing our processional hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. His Easter gift to us is new life in Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we, are, we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With sincere hearts and minds, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the victor over death and the grave. You have risen from the tomb. We also want to rise victoriously over the death and defeat we face every day. We confess, Lord, that we so easily live only for ourselves. We have neglected to live wholeheartedly for you and for others. We are trapped in the tombs of self-centeredness. We need your forgiveness. Roll away the stone of sin and crush the hardness of our heart. Forgive us. Let us die to sin and be raised to new life in you through your resurrection. Amen. Jesus has carried our sins to his own death. His sacrifice is complete and full. He has won the victory. He is your living, personal, and sure redeemer. Hardened hearts are crushed. Stone walls of sin have been rolled away. Alleluia. In Jesus' name and by his command, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have been forgiven. We have been restored to new life in Christ. Alleluia. We continue the liturgy for, of Scripture for Easter. Jesus was handed over by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross. By his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord was declared with power to be the Son of God. In raising Jesus Christ from the dead, God has destroyed death. He has brought life and mortality Our Lord's victory fills us with joy and peace and hope. We are confident of his presence with us this day, and so we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you lovingly gave yourself into suffering and death to atone for our sins. Then you gloriously displayed your victory over death by rising again, just as you have predicted. As we celebrate this Easter day, we want to imitate you. By the power of your spirit, lead us to die to sin and to rise to new life that you, that you have won for us. We praise you, Jesus, conqueror of death and giver of life, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Since the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in us, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit. Let us drink because of the mercies of God, present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to him, which is the spiritual worship of the Lord to him. We remain standing for the hymn of praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for this, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this Easter Sunday, comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 65th chapter. For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more, no more shall be heard in, in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat of their fruit. They shall not... They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all of my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gradual. Uh, Christ is risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. The epistle lesson this morning comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. But on the first day of the week at early, uh, early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna uh, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale 
and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our, the hymn of the day. Now all the vault of heaven resounds in number 465. mercy and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Um, if you go to the campus of the United Nations, there's uh, a wall there, there's a tribute wall called the Isaiah Wall. And on this wall is a, a quote from Isaiah 2, verse 4. And, that, and Isaiah says here, They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Now, the United Nations was established coming out of uh, the Second World War uh, by the, the nations that fought in that war. Uh, into, and they, it was established to, to establish peace uh, in the world. Uh, and according to the Charter of the United Nations, it says this, to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind and to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights and in the dignity and worth of the human person and equal rights for men and women and nations large and small to establish conditions in which justice and respect for the obligations arising from treaties and other sources of international law can be maintained and to promote social progress and better standards of life in larger freedom. So that's just kind of the preamble to the Charter of the United Nations. And, and so what do they hope to establish here? Well, they hope to establish peace on earth. And they want a peace that, that is established according to these elements. You know, there, there's no more war. There's uh, respect for human rights. There's um, equality uh, between men and women. And, and that there's justice in the world. And, and, of course, those are things that we, we want to strive for. Uh, but yet, we've got that question, how are we doing so far? Right? It's been well over 70 years since the establishment of the United Nations. Has it been successful in preventing wars? Well, we just look at the 20th century, the Cold War, and, and uh, then in the 21st century, the war on terrorism. We, look at, we can look at uh, Russia, a uh, UN charter member, invading another UN member, Ukraine, to try to take over, and all the, uh, all the atrocities that are happening through that, uh, through that war. Certainly, the UN hasn't been uh, very good at preventing war, right? Uh, what about the other things? What about promoting justice uh, in the world? And, well, we, we look and we see a lot of injustice in the world. We see human trafficking. We see slavery still taking place in some parts of the world. Uh, what about the dignity of human life? Well, we don't have to look any farther than our own, within our own borders. Uh, how we, how we, are we, as the United States, doing in that area? Uh, we have the scourge of abortion out there. That's been there for 50 years. And we hope and pray that the Supreme Court will overturn that uh, in the near future. But yet, uh, we also know that there are those that want to not only uh, promote abortion, but they want to expand abortion. Uh, believe it or not, there are states in the, uh, like in California where they're batting around the idea of not only abortion from conception all the way to birth, but even post birth. And according to some of the language, that could be anywhere from two weeks after to maybe even two years after. And so we, we can see uh, there's a lot of injustice, a lot of disrespect for human life and the dignity of human life. And we see that, that uh, it's less about uh, a, a choice and it's more about promoting a culture of death. And that fits in well with the world because the culture of the world is death as war uh, moves on and, and, and takes untold millions and millions of lives in our world. The UN Charter of wanting to establish peace that creates this sort of utopia has missed the mark on a number of levels. And it really is a fanciful dream in this, uh, in this world. It's something that we can strive for but never will attain. And, and, a, and a, the idea of a utopia can't even solve the other issues that we have in the world. It can't solve the issues of, of hurricanes and, and uh, all the natural disasters that we see. It can't solve the problem of death. Right? And so the world, even though they want to put their hope in man and in what man can do to try to solve these problems, as Christians, we know 
that these things will never be resolved on this side of heaven. Uh, these things will not come about because of man's ingenuity or man's ability to solve these issues. But the good news this morning is that these issues have been solved. They've been solved at the cross as God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be the, the solution to sin. You see, Adam and Eve uh, brought sin into the world. They brought uh, the death, along with sin, they brought death in the world and the corruption of all of God's creation. And Jesus came to be the solution to that corruption, to the solution to the death that sin has brought to us in this world. Uh, last week, we were singing uh, uh, with the, the people that first uh, Palm Sunday, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that word Hosanna means help us or save us. It's a cry. It's a petition to the Lord. And, and God has heard that prayer. He has heard the cries of his people. And so he sends his son, Jesus Christ, whose name literally means the Lord saves, to come, come to this earth and to save us. He comes to Jerusalem the city of peace to establish not a temporal peace, but an eternal peace because he is the prince of peace. And he establishes it not uh, uh, by warring uh, and bringing uh, an army with him, but he comes to solve it as a servant. You know, Jesus says the son of man uh, 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 came to serve and to uh, sacrifice his life as a ransom for many. He came to be a suffering servant. And as a suffering servant, he came to solve the issues of sin. Last Friday, uh, we heard uh, uh, from Isaiah, uh, who saw in the future and saw this uh, suffering servant. He says this, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, yours and mine and that of the entire world. And upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And by his wounds, we are healed. What are, those, what are the things that we need to be healed from? Well, as, as sinners, as people who have been born in sin, we, we need the, the, the ultimate healing because, as Paul says, we were born in death. But Christ has come to give us life. As Jesus dies on the cross, he did not stay dead on the cross. He did not stay dead in the tomb, but he rose again on the third day so that he would give life uh, to all those who believe in him. In holy baptism, you have been given that new life already, and that eternal life that Christ has won for us on the cross. And in a sense, you and I are his offspring as uh, we become children of God, children of life, rather than uh, children of death uh, that is found in this world. And as children of, of, of life, of children of light, uh, we, we know that we will live forever with our Savior. And what does that look like? What does that look like when, uh, when eternity comes and Jesus comes on that last day? We, we get a picture of it in our Old Testament lesson this morning. Uh, the Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah gives us a picture of what life is like and going to be like when Jesus returns. Uh, the Lord says this, For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Now, God is not creating out of nothing here. Okay? God is going to bring about a restoration. And that is the, that's the witness of the Scriptures. God's not going to annihilate this earth, but He's going to renew it. Just like He doesn't annihilate us in our bodies, but rather our bodies rest in the tomb and will be raised to glory on the last day. So the scriptures point to this. Uh, uh, the Lord says in Revelation 21 verse 5, Behold, I make all things 
new. And Paul in uh, Romans 8 verse 21 says, creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption. Now sometimes we might have a misunderstanding uh, uh, that comes in mind when we're thinking that the, the world's going to be annihilated. And sometimes we, we might point to uh, 2 Peter 3, which talks about uh, all, all of creation being burned up in fire. But uh, what's being pictured there is not an annihilation of the world, but rather a purification. You see, the world is, is su suffering from sin itself. It's suffering from the effects of sin. And, and we see that with hurricanes and earthquakes. We see that with uh, volcanoes erupting and all these other things. Uh, it's a product of sin in this world. And God is going to purify this world from, uh, from all this. And in essence, return the world back to where it was. Uh, to the original, that I had with its original perfection in uh, Genesis 1 and 2, before the fall into sin. That's our hope. That is what God has prepared for us. He has prepared an eternity in, in, uh, in this world. You know, there's a, a song in the 80s, you know, heaven is a place on earth. And, and when Christ returns, that literally will be true. Heaven will be on earth as we live with our Savior forever and ever. And part of living with him forever is that it's going to be characterized by joy. And we see a lot of joy, not only in the, in the uh, hymns that we're singing this morning, but we also see a lot of joy in our Old Testament lesson as well. In, uh, let's see here, in, uh, in verse 18 and 19, uh, the, the Lord talks about joy. And he uses the words glad and gladness, joy and rejoice. And listen just how much the, those words are used. Uh, the Lord speaking to his people, to you and to me, he says this, uh, But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy. And her people to be a gladness. And then listen to what the Lord says. He says, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall it be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. You know, the Lord calls us to rejoice. To rejoice even now. Even though we're waiting for all this to come about. He calls on us to rejoice even now. Because it is a certain today. As it will be on the last day. That it has been accomplished. That it will come through. Because God never lies. And he has won that victory for us. And not only can we rejoice. But God rejoices in you even now because uh, Christ has won that salvation because you've been called and been baptized into his name you've been made to be his precious children God rejoices in you and will, will rejoice over you for all of eternity and all that joy is based off of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he didn't stay dead, we also will not remain dead. Isaiah says this in uh, Isaiah 25. He says, and he will swallow upon this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And that's what Easter is all about. Rejoicing in his salvation, the salvation that Christ accomplished for us because he did rise from the dead. That is our joy. And we have also have joy because we know that nothing will ever be taken away from us. You know, we live in this world and we still are struggling with sin and, and death in this world. And so we, we, we still lose things, you know. Uh, we still lose loved ones. We still lose 
uh, land. We still lose homes through natural disasters or wars. Uh, a lot of things can slip through our fingers. But God promises that nothing will ever be taken away from us again in eternity. Uh, God says this, They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat of their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. God, uh, God has an inheritance for you that never spoils or fades away. Uh, an inheritance that can never be taken away. And so there is security in this new creation, in this renewed uh, creation that God will bring about on the last day and as he raises us also. But part of this new creation also is characterized by peace. Christ has made peace through his cross. Peace between us and our Father in heaven and peace with one another as we love one another, we forgive one another, and we encourage one another. And that perfect peace will be uh, perfected on that last day when we shall no, no longer know any sort of uh, dissensions or any arguments or anything. It will all be a thing of the past because the Prince of Peace has established a true and lasting peace. Not just a cessation of hostilities, but a true peace. And a true peace that's based off of his love for you and for me. Uh, the Lord says this, On that day the wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. People today want to put their hope in man. They want to put their hope in what man can accomplish through the institutions of human beings, whether it be governments, whether it be uh, institutions like the United Nations. But we ultimately know that none of those things can bring about a utopia. None of them can solve the problems of war. None of them can really establish a true and lasting peace. And none of them can solve the problem of sickness and death. But Christ has come. He is the solution to all of those things. As God sent his son to be our savior. To come and to renew all of creation. Including you and me. As we look forward to that day. When, we, when that good work that God began in you and your baptism. Will be brought to completion. When Jesus Christ returns. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior to life everlasting. Amen. Uh, at this time, uh, as you're able, I invite you to please stand uh, and we continue as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. Since at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh, gracious Father, help us believe that because Jesus lives, we too are made alive by faith and shall live with him eternally. Lift our vision from sin and death that we not despair nor grow weary of doing, uh, of doing well as we await the completion of all that our Lord began. And give us the will and desire to use our days to proclaim his victory to the ends of the earth. Praise 
give your blessings to your church and to her ministers, that we be called to faith and repentance. Rejoice in your merciful goodness and be kept in the faith through the means of grace until the day when we are raised to everlasting life with Christ. Give courage and discernment to the missionaries far and near and to those planting new congregations, that they abound in the hope of the resurrection, and that those who hear this gospel be granted the Holy Spirit and faith. Consider those who live, uh, whose lives are burdened by afflictions of the body, mind, or spirit, and who seek your healing and strength. Deliver them according to your merciful will and sustain them in faith until their troubles and trials give way to the blessings of the resurrection and eternal life. Here is especially as we pray for Chris Kelly, Haley McDonald, Shirley Bartles, Robert Dinsey, Darlene Dinsey, Leroy Beathy, Shirley Fry, Jim Borenpaul, Emma Walters, Laverne Bartles, Sophie Carnegie, Sean Otmer, Alan DeYoung, and all those who we name in our hearts. Risen Lord, live in us that we may live in you. Hear your people on behalf of our nation and all our leaders, on behalf of all peoples and nations, for peace, justice, and freedom, and for, and for the will to work together to release suffering and deliver the oppressed. Guide us in the way, uh, guide us in the good use of the time, skills, abilities, and resources you provide, so that we may support those in our care and serve the poor and those in need with the treasures of the kingdom. Accept from our lips the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and from our hands the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart. Remembering those who came to the tomb in sorrow and returned to their homes with the fear of the Lord in their hearts, receive our thanksgiving for the faithful who have gone before us. Give your comfort to those who grieve the loss of those they love and bring us with them into your nearer presence where sorrow and tears are no more. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our offerings this morning, and I invite you to please fill out the attendance pads in your pews this morning.
continue with the offertory hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, hymn 474. stand as you're able and we continue with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death 
And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
I invite you to please stand as you're able. We continue on page 17 of the Song of Thank Thanksgiving, Thank the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank and praise you for the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over death and hell. We are filled with awe, knowing he did it all for us. Nourish us through his body and blood, so his new life may be our new life. In all of life, may we say and do glorify him who was delivered up for our sins and was raised again for our justification. Amen. Receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. Under his blessing, every day will be an Easter day. I invite you to remain standing as uh, uh, we continue with our recessional hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.